Finally got there! Radio guys, this is uh, the first shelf trip ever in my boat. Pretty good conditions and it's swelly. The boys are keen, so Matthias, Ivan Whee. and Glenn. And uh, we're trolling yeah, right now. But we're yeah. here and uh, we're gonna try to catch some wahoo doggies, mahi mahi and I don't know, as long as we have some fun, it'll be good. Yeah, big good live. Our first ever blue water spearfishing trip. We decided to head out to the shelf 90 kilometers offshore and uh, into pretty much some area that we've never been before and few of us knew really what we were doing. And so we decided that we were just gonna wing it. We had a little bit of knowledge, but not all that much. And now I'm just gonna talk through a little bit of what we do through this video and uh, take it only as a grain of salt because what I know is very minuscule. There's a few key things when it comes to blue water spearfishing. How well you position your drifts in relation to the current, keeping a consistent burly trail, and most of all, working as a team. Landing these special fish is really up to how well you and your crew work together, and it's especially important to remember that you don't want to be out there hurting and losing these fish to the sharks. The first couple dives of the day, we focus on trying to find that pressure point, see where the current was pushing and where all the bait seemed to be sitting. After a few dives, we sort of found a bit of bait, and uh, our burly trail was pretty consistent at this stage and we started to see a bit more of those bigger predators. In this video you may have seen just before, there was a couple little bonito darting around and eating the burly. And uh, this is a good sign because that generally means there could be bit of bigger predators around and uh, all that commotion does sort of stir up the other fish. We started to notice a lot more Spanish mackerel getting around. On this dive, I'm chasing up this one that just doesn't quite want to come in close enough. And uh, you notice there's a lot of big bull sharks getting around. Pretty much every single time you look down, there's two or three big ones cruising around the flasher. They're more so interested in the fish rather than yourselves, but it's always a good idea to keep an eye out. At this stage of the day, we start to land a couple nice fish, and I'll let those clips roll on now.
Well, we've got a couple Spanish and a Kobe in the Esky and uh, the water is so clear. I don't know if you can see it on that side. The water is so clear and we're gonna try get some coronation trout. We've all seen one and we've all, well, almost all of us have lost one. That's yeah, so beautiful, what? That's a solid, eh? After a few hours of shallow water diving chasing coronation trout, we decide to head back out into the blue water and chase the fish that we've come out here for, the dog tooth tuna. You may have seen in the last couple clips, I obviously missed a hell of a lot of those coronation trout. I think I would have missed six all up for the day and uh, they're definitely a lot smarter than your standard trout. Um, it does make them a lot more fun to hunt though, so hopefully in the next trip I might be able to get a chance to shoot one. On this next drift, we've stayed on the same little pinnacle and we're just trying a different drift, seeing if there's any other fish that we might be interested in. After a few more dives on this pinnacle, we don't really come across anything that's caught our eye. We decide to punch out a few kilometers more and head to a new pinnacle that potentially might hold even better fish. On the first couple drifts, we noticed that it was a lot more fishy, there was lots more bait getting around, and now that the sun's coming down, it's a good chance that we might see that dog tooth tuna. On this dive, I believe Matthias is going down and you can see we've got a pretty consistent burly trail. Lots of fish are starting to swim up and eat the burly and obviously that's gonna be what really brings in those big predators. On this dive, I don't think Matthias sees all too much, but it's a good sign that we're seeing more bait fish and we're all just a bit more excited now that we found a bit of better ground. We found that early morning and late afternoon seemed to be when all those big predators were most active. During the middle of the day when we decided to just jump in the flats and look for coronation trout, there really wasn't much happening and we didn't really waste any time by doing that. We were just waiting for the sun to go down. And at this stage, the sun's starting to go down and it's getting a bit darker. On this dive, you can see there's a big wahoo. Matthias does actually miss it, unfortunately. Luckily for us, there were plenty of great fish getting around and on the exact same drift, the boys actually came across two mahi-mahi. I wasn't there to witness it and it wasn't caught on video, but apparently it was a pretty astonishing moment watching them cruise in and cruise straight out. 
On this dive, I take a long shot on the Spanish mackerel, hoping I might just be able to hit it. Unfortunately, I miss completely. And uh, on this dive now, it's around 4.35 p.m. and I've just shot the first doggy of the trip. Matias is going down to take a second shot for me and secure the fish. I'll just let this clip play on. We are all really excited to land our first dog to the tuna. The sun is literally going down. Matthias has just shot. Have a look. It's pretty good. Shot a jobby, and we just got a doggy as well. What a day! Ivan got his cobia. Ooh. Glenn got his coronation trout. Matthias got his jobfish, and I got my little puppy dog. And we are all stoked. It's still mint conditions. Check out that sunset. We're uh, gonna cook up a storm and get to sleep. All right. Coronation trout, Mackies, doggy, jobby, and a nice cobia, and uh, Ivan's common cold trout. Hey! <laughs> My first favorite fish. <laughs> well, it's uh, 6 a.m., just about to turn 6 a.m., and uh, we got up at 5, punched out, back to the shelf. And uh, Ivan's keen to get himself a dog tooth tuna. Woo! Took a long shot on a really big one, apparently. Dougies. With the real gun. He would have lost his gun on anything. <laughs> We started off the second day on a spot that was just littered with bait fish. There was wahoo, Spanish mackerel and heaps of pelagics heading around. We were pretty positive that we might come across that big dog tooth tuna. On this dive, both Matias and Glenn are trying to chase down this wahoo. Unfortunately, a bit of miscommunication and it sort of spooked off. A few dives later, we're starting to see a lot of big bull sharks cruise in, but luckily still lots of bait getting around. The bait fish generally sits around 20 to 30 meters deep, making it hard to see from the surface, but as soon as you take a dive down, it sort of just explodes with life. On this drift here, Glenn's just taken a dive as he's seen the first dog tooth tuna of the morning. He's lined himself up perfectly and places a really good shot into this one straight through the cheekbone. Unfortunately, he wasn't recording, so he didn't get his POV, but Matthias caught pretty much everything on camera and I'm just gonna let this raw footage play on and you'll just see how the boys work together to land this fish. And it really shows that teamwork is key when you're landing these kinds of big fish. Oi, let me know if you want second shot, eh? Thank <laughs> you. 
One of the most exciting moments for all of us boys, landing the first real big pelagic fish on this first blue water trip. After getting the first doggy of the day into the boat, we regroup and do the exact same drift again. This time, we're trying to chum it up as best as we can. On the dive just prior to this, I took a dive down and saw another doggy around the same size. I unfortunately wasn't able to get close enough, and although I think I could have pushed myself more, it's probably lucky that I didn't. On this dive here, you might just see him just underneath me. He's cruising along and I'm trying my best to get down there. I know he's still about 10 to 15 meters away and I'm just not sure if I can quite push myself to that depth. Unfortunately, I just had to let this one go. Before we knew it, it was already midday and we had to head back in. After a few long drifts, doing the same area and trying all sorts of different things, we just couldn't quite get close to any of the fish. The shark started to get a little bit fired up and we decided to call it for the day. All of us boys were extremely happy with how it turned out and all the special fish we got to see and shoot. For our first time doing blue water, it was definitely a success and it would be great to see how we can implement what we did and work on what we did as well for future trips. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, it was a lot of fun to edit and hopefully there will be many more blue water trips to come. It was great to be in a different area doing different things and I'll see you guys in the next episode.